Hello everyone and welcome back to Bikinis After Babies. Thank you so much for joining us today. Of course, I am one of your hosts, Mandy Rashawn, here with your other beautiful IFBB pro, Jillian Hughes. Hey guys, it's been a minute. We're so excited to be back. Well, not that we really went anywhere, but we had almost like a month of guests on the show. And mm -hmm. really when we do those, we kind of just dive right into the interview. And so we haven't done a life update in a hot minute. And so mm -hmm. um, today we're kind of just going to catch up, chit chat. And we're also going to talk about the Olympia, which was um, just Exciting. this past weekend. It was so awesome. And so lots of... Um, lots of mix-ups and you know some exciting things to talk about there so that's yeah. kind of what we're gonna do today so hopefully we're keeping you company while you're driving kids around or doing <laughs> cardio or cardio. meal prepping or whatever it might be so drop us a comment below and let us know what you're doing while you're listening to our girly chit chat today and so um anyways maybe we'll start with like our vacations because we took back-to-back -back vacations mandy was right before me i just got back from mine a couple days ago um so mandy why don't you tell us about your wilderness getaway with all the bears <laughs> oh, my, oh my god so many bears oh it was crazy no so we went to gatlinburg tennessee we did this trip last year and we did it when it was cold though in november yeah. and it was just this stunning beautiful trip we drove there drove through nashville had a great time we stayed about like four or five days and so last year we decided we're like this trip was so great we want to do it again next year so we went this year but we can't we went at the beginning of october so the first week of october and it was a lot warmer and we have new bikes so we wanted to take our bikes and do a whole bunch of trails mountains downhill biking and just go on a lot of adventures and that is exactly what we did i actually came back from this trip and like lost three pounds i think because and that was on top of enjoying cider tours like we biked and hiked everywhere. And one big thing about this trip that we said we wanted to do was to see a bear. Because last year we didn't see any bears. And apparently there are bears everywhere. Well, we saw a total of eight bears close oh and personal on accident so many times. <laughs> it was insane. So when we got to our resort, we saw a bear immediately as we like were pulling out and it like walked right up to the truck. We're like, oh my God, that's incredible. Well, then the next day we saw some outside of our window just playing around and we're like, more bears. Well, then later on that day, we went, we went on a bike ride. There were bears playing in a tree. And so come to find out the bears in town are really nice. Um, oh, they're friendly bears. They are, they don't want to attack you. They don't want to bother you, but the bears in town will get really close to you uh -huh. because they know that you have food. So they just want you to stay away from them. Don't want you to feed them. Just take your pictures and move on. So we then, we went on a few like other adventures. Like we went downhill mountain biking, which by the way, is exactly as intense as all of you guys are picturing it. It is what you see Sounds on TV. Horrifying. It, it was six <laughs> minutes of like, don't fall off a mountain. Don't fall off a mountain. Oh my God. I, I don't have any of it on camera, obviously, because it, it, you know, we're just on a bike, but like, it was just those sharp turns, like super intense six minutes. You can't even get scared because you'll fall. Oh my God. Once I got down, I told Aaron, I was like, this was fun never doing it again like <laughs> i tried it i like biking but not downhill mountain biking yeah. so we decided to go on another popular trail and this was up a mountain too but it was more scenic like more peaceful and again lots of bears we were going down the mountain turn a corner there's a bear sitting right there in the like middle of the path we're like oh sh shit, what do we do and we just stare at it and we just kind of like wait for it to leave and go about its merry way so the trip was magical though like yeah our favorite place so was pretty to, it was it just this place the air the the environment everybody is so friendly so nice and it's touristy so there's people from all over mm -hmm. but it was it was fantastic like it was exactly what we needed it was good timing too oh, that's so awesome. yeah it was quite the road trip too like i didn't realize you guys um drove because for us like in st louis like it 
I, Tennessee is not that far. It's a little bit farther for mm-hmm. you, I think. Um, mm-hmm. But that's nice. Just like couple time. That's always good to get away with your significant other and, you know. Bond. Yeah, we had to drive through. Like, you're closer. You're four hours closer because we drive through St. Louis. Yeah. And I think next year we talked about doing it a family trip because there's so many things our family would like out there. So I think next year yeah. we're going to um, rent a bigger place and do a family thing. But so you just got back, though. So that was me the beginning of October. And mm-hmm. then the week later, you went on your Mexico vacation, which we looked did. amazing. Yeah, It looked so refreshing. So how was yeah. that? You share it that. It was awesome. It was so – it's, like, definitely our style, like – you know, we traveled a lot this year, like to shows and well, Brian only came with me to one show. Um, but you know, I've traveled a lot with like cheer and with bodybuilding. And so like, I just really kind of wanted like a do nothing kind of trip. Mm -hmm. And, um, there's a group of friends that we've traveled with a few times before. And, um, honestly, it's like the only way we really see each other is we just meet in Mexico because everyone just is so busy and it's hard to get our schedules to coordinate. So it's two other couples. Um, and it was wonderful. We, We went to Cancun, um, But, um, we of course had the concern of the weather because, um, you know, we're right on the tail end of the two hurricanes that went through Florida. There was, um, was it Milton and Helen maybe? So, um, anyways, so yeah, so we were a little bit apprehensive. Like, would we get out? Like, would we be able to, um, still go on our trip, but we had perfect weather. We're right on the tail end of those two hurricanes. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I was really nervous that, um, we would have some bad weather, but we didn't, the weather was perfect. And we just laughed a lot, laid around, um, went to restaurants, um, caught up on sleep and, you know, it was just great. That's like our, definitely our style of vacay, um, because Mm -hmm. we're go, go, go all the time with the kids and, um, it's just nice to, to go away and go on dates every night and relax. And we both love like laying out in the sun and, um, so yeah, so we had, we had a really good time. I, I really felt like super recharged. Like I will say that like sometimes I come up from vacation and I'm like, Oh, sad. Like, you know, I don't want to go home. I just like want to stay in chill mode a little bit longer. But, um, I was, um, almost like renewed because, mm-hmm. you know, we had, I had all those shows and then like we just threw ourselves right into like the swing of fall sports. I just needed kind of like just like a a little bit of a reset. Um, So just like coming back with like, you know, clear idea of like what my, you know, prep is going to look like for next year and like, you know, what it is I want for my off season. And, um, and some of those things are just things I like thought about and reflected on Mm -hmm. while I was there just with time to think, you know? So, um, so yeah, so really good little getaway and just, um, kind of excited about next year. And then of course the Olympia was on while I was there, which I wasn't sure I would get to watch because it was, um, on Saturday and like Saturday was like on the events calendar for the resort like there was like this foam party and like all this stuff going on and I'm like I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get to watch it but we had rain and so that was the only day it rained we had sun like all morning into like the early afternoon and then all of a sudden like one o'clock hits and like storm cloud rolls over and I'm like oh this kind of works out perfectly like we have hours until dinner and I'm going to go watch the Olympia in my room so I did so I got to watch like every minute of prejudging and then finals kind of same thing happened we had gone to dinner that night and um we even went out to a nightclub we get back to the room it's like 11 o'clock and bikini's just starting i'm like this is perfect the stars have aligned i get to watch it and uh (laughs) so i didn't miss didn't miss any of it which was awesome because it was just i mean every year it's amazing Um, But I think because I was competing a lot this year and like following every single show, I think I was more, um, I guess, invested in like, you know, how people did and their journeys and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. So it was, um, I don't know, I always say like the, the pros at the top of our sport are like our celebrities, like... Yes. You know, Julia Roberts could walk past me. I'd be like, oh, that's cool, you know. But like, if Laura Lee Chapatos walked past me, I'd be like, oh my gosh, Laura Lee, you know. So it was, yeah. um, and it was really cool just to see some like surprises in the lineup and, and just inspiring sure. too. Like, you know, I just, I, some of these girls have been getting after it since like the very beginning of this year and we're like almost into the end of the year. So, yeah. And it's, I love to see after Laura Lee won, 
She made a, I mean, the, obviously there was like lots of posts. There was a repost of everything, but there was a post that she made and it showed her seven years of like just yes. per- consistently doing it for seven years and like her different looks, her different shapes, her different things. And it just goes to show that like, this is, this is a sport of longevity. Like it mm-hmm. is, you're not going to hop into the NPC, you know, amateur league and just like. Like, I hear so many people say, like, oh, I'm going to bring a pro physique to my amateur show. That's fantastic that you have that expectation of yourself. But you have to understand the people that you watch and idolize and look up to, like, they're those are, you know, 10-year, 12-year physiques. Those are grinding it out, getting judges feedback countless times to be, like, your quads are too dense, your, your, you know, tie-ins are this, your this is that. And it's, like, they have to go back and, like fix it they have to go back and do different things and it's like you don't just wake up like that or a year later look like that you know no I I love that completely agree with you and I think Mm -hmm. like it's probably my favorite thing about this sport because I really enjoy that challenge and I um I think maybe what happens though is and we've talked about this before like taking that feedback too personally whereas um Mm -hmm. you just you can't you just have to go okay here are my strengths. Here are the things I need to work on. Back to the drawing board. Let's improve and like continue to do that. Because I think somebody had given me this analogy one time. Like um, in our sport, like, you know, people will look at the stage and be like, oh, I'm going to be the next Laura Lee Chapados, right? Yep. Okay. Do you look at any other sport and do that? Like, you know what? I mean, or Michael like Jordan. basketball. I mean, Michael Jordan. Like you just, it, it's like, I don't know why people think like that's any different, right? Like, of course, the people at the top of our game, like they, um, the top of our sport, sorry, they have like um, the genetic component, like, mm-hmm. and they certainly work really, really hard. But like, you know, these people at the very, very top are very gifted and they, they and then they have the best team around them and the best yeah. um, support system and um, and the work ethic. So it's like, you know, and I'm not saying somebody couldn't like just kind of show up with great genetics and all of that too, and like not take that. So few spot. and far between, though. Like, but it doesn't mean that there's not a place for everybody either. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it should, like it should motivate you. Like it motivated me so much. Like I didn't watch that and get discouraged. Like, oh, that's never gonna be me. Like I was like, I want to be the best in the world too. Like I want to do it. You know, I want to get up there and and show these improvements and you know all, all these things. I just thought it was amazing. Um, yeah. And so I was so happy to see my girl Laura Lee. Because, you know, Canadians. We oh, gosh, that's that. right. <laughs> well, um, and kind of like, and like you said, like, I met her this year. And, like, we yeah, took pictures. Right. And, like, we, t- I know, yes. we, like, talked this year. And so, like, it was kind of surreal. Because, like, you know, I shared, like, you know, I shared the girls that we've had on our podcast who, like, you mm-hmm. know, you know, Angelica, Brittany, like, all the hard work they put in. But, like, and also, like, the girls, like, I met Allie this year. And I met, you know, Laura Lee yeah. this year. And so, like, just talking with them and seeing them in person it is kind of like it is like you're starstruck but they are just people and so and they Mm -hmm. act like just normal people and so like it was easy you know so i was so happy to see that she won though like i know she's worked so hard for so many years for that title i know i know i mean and i mean when she walked out it was like i'm i mean i think there's something about her posing that I think anybody who's really studying this sport needs to take notes because what I noticed about her posing is that it was very elegant, but it Mm -hmm. wasn't over the top. I will say her Arnold posing was a lot. Like it was very theatrical. She had done like some little ballroom sort of training going into it. It was like only Laura Lee could pull it off. Like it was fucking awesome honestly but it was a lot and I Mm -hmm. think like her posing at the Olympia like it was so clean and subtle I mean she just hit her front pose and it was like but like she didn't have to like wind up to it it was just like boom here I am and the Mm -hmm. confidence um I mean you I was like frozen and I've seen her Mm -hmm. on stage a million times I was just like this is it that like star quality um which I think comes from knowing that you're right where you need to be and you yeah. have done everything you can because I think that's possibly what hurt Amy Delgado and I'm a huge Amy fan. I had Amy in the win, which we'll talk about our yeah. predictions because they're kind of funny. Um, but I was like this, this girl has, you know, done 
all the things that she needs to do. I love her physique. I think she's so beautiful. Um, but when she came out, she just didn't look like she felt that confident. I didn't think she was off. Like I, I'm like, I don't know how you judge these girls at, in the top 10. Any one of them could have been the winner of the show. Um, you know, people will say that they'll say like, Oh, well this and this and like, act like they know what the judges are looking for. Um, yeah. I think when you're that good, you know, the tiniest little thing can be the difference between first, second, and third. But I think like her stage presentation just wasn't the, the same confidence that we saw like in Pittsburgh um, mm -hmm. and in at the New York Pro. And those are two huge prestigious shows. But I mean, I have heard pros talk about like there's just something about the Olympia stage that th it's, it's so, much, so pressure. much pressure. Yes. So mm -hmm. um, so I was bummed for her because, well, no, I mean, not really because she did move up. She was sixth place like two mm -hmm. years prior and she moved up to fourth. Um, but I think... I don't think I'm alone in saying that she could have won that show. There's a lot of people that really thought that she could have won it. Um, and I think she will one day. I, I really do. But um, yeah, it was Laura I, Lee's time for sure. Yeah. And I, the same thing kind of happened to her last year, if you remember. Like there was talk about how she just didn't – like something was off as well. It's not that yeah. like her conditioning was off or like there's just something. And yeah. I really do think it's just the pressure of that. Like – I I 100% agree with you. Actually, yeah. I'll take a step back. So going back to what you said about Laura Lee's posing, I cannot agree with you more. I loved her posing at Olympia last year, 23. It was very ballroom. It was very mm -hmm. pretty. Not taking away from it, but it was a lot. And she did that at the Arnold too. The thing that is, there's like this kind of like double-edged sword with that because it's beautiful to watch. It's so pretty, but not every, not many people can do that. Yeah. And then it gets discouraging for amateurs seeing that, thinking like, oh, I can't do that, so I'm not going to compete. Because then they think like they'll have to do that. And then yeah. it's like, no, you don't have to do that. That's just something she's choosing to do in her routine. But it can be discouraging. So, but at the same time, like, it's her. Like, you know, she can pull that off, of course. But, I, like, her, her posing the show was like posing and routine. You're right. Yeah. Like, she nailed every pose. It was very fluid. There was no yeah. extra fluff. Her back pose, she didn't even, she's like, oh, here, like, here I am. Like, Boom, she I didn't am. push. Yeah. Um, it's the perfect but, example of, of like, um, just presenting the body in, in a beautiful way without it looking stiff, without it looking too much because mm -hmm. you know after the Arnold and, and, and well, you're, I think you're right. She did do that routine twice um, and people were kind of showing up and the amateur level doing this like weird arm thing. And I was like, Oh no, like no one told them like, that's like a pro routine and you don't really have the time to do that. And, and it's just too much. Like even that big hair flick that a lot of them do, I've seen amateurs pull that off and just like not have the control in their core and in their glutes and everything's jiggling around. And it's just like too, too much. I love like a clean and simple routine where you can just see the shape that you want to see. Yep. Like Show some of the, physique. yeah, like some of the poses are like, okay, that's great. That side glute, that's one glute. Right. But like what you're really judged on is like the front and the back pose. So, mm -hmm. um, and really like, again, just that confidence that she had, like it was, you know, just, just incredible. And that I think arguably is how, um, Jasmine Gonzalez slid her way into the top 10, which like I would say, she is definitely one of my favorite competitors. Like I love her stage presentation. She's got a super tight waist, real mm -hmm. nice full muscle bellies. Um, I love, I just love her, love everything about her, but she just doesn't compete that much. So yeah. when she was in first call it, I was like, and I don't know if you um, watched all of it, but she was the cutest when they sent off the top three or four. She was like, ah, like she was so, it was just cool to see somebody so excited, you know? Well, and that was her first was. Olympia, right? Like, I think I no, looked back she's, and that, she's, I think she's done two or three Olympias before. Okay. She's she just wasn't there last year. Yeah. No, I don't think, she, well, no, I think she did because I think she had made a post about not being happy with her conditioning last year. Okay. I just missed now that. She's then. got a new coach. Um, but, but that's what I'm saying is that like, I think a lot of people know who she is, but 
I think a lot of people don't know who she is because she doesn't yeah. compete that much. She's a great poser. Um, but it was just, it, I, I love to see, I want to say the underdog. She's not an underdog, but like somebody slide in that top 10 that you didn't yeah. expect to be there. Um, and for her to be so excited, like super mm-hmm. cool. Like what that would feel like to just be, she wasn't on anyone's top 10. Like I watched all these, you know, Olympia predictions and I'm reading all the comments of like everybody's trying to call the top 10 she wasn't on there and it's again not that she's I mean any any one of the 46 women that competed are the best in the world right um mm-hmm. but just not on anyone's radar again because she just doesn't compete that much so um super cool to see that but again beautiful clean posing nothing real snazzy snazzy about it just real confident and um and I love to see, I'm just I love posing so much so you know it's so great for to watch yeah. those routines and um you know just take notes and screen record everything so I'm like oh I like that I like that you know mm-hmm. so um so yeah so do we want to share our predictions because um we did this was this like a I think it was like while you were in Tennessee and I was getting ready to go to Mexico I was like let's make predictions uh-huh. and just see see how close we get yeah, so I think it was right around that time frame. Yeah. But yeah, so. we can share our predictions. So do we want to share like our top five or like? Okay, let's go back and forth. Like you do what you okay. had first and I'll do what I had in first. Okay. So okay. you already said but, you had in first. Yeah. First place I had Amy Delgado. So first place I had Laura Lee. <laughs> okay, you win that one. <laughs> yeah. But I will say I went back and forth a million times. And I think the only reason why I hadn't put Laura Lee in first, and it's not because I don't love her because I really love her and I think she deserved it. I just have in historically, she hasn't, um, you know, shown up mm-hmm. the way that they wanted her to. And um, and she was spot on. So, I, I, I mean, I, I could have gone either way on that one. Um, but again, I just am such an Amy fan, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So in second, I had Laura Lee. And then in second, you had... I had Maureen because obviously yeah. at the time none of us knew that she wasn't going to compete. So that was because that was though. like, I think Wednesday. And do you remember we saw a Reddit thread? And I'm not going to say who <laughs> you it and was, I went crazy. But somebody you sent like, me. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it was like somebody was like, "Oh, one of the top five is going to be out for per rumor or whatever." And I'm like, "This is so clickbait! Like, this is not true." Like everybody's in Vegas, everybody's showing up, everything's great, and then whoop, Maureen, she have a an ankle fracture or something, and and pulled yeah. out on the Wednesday before. She was doing. She went to Pittsburgh to do a photo shoot, and I'm pretty sure that's what her clip said. And yeah. then she uh, fell on the escalator, and Ugh. she messed up her ankle. Um, they did offer to help her and like to wear like ankle support on stage, and she just she was like. You know, I'm just not going to show up my best, so I don't want to show up kind of thing. So It'd be so hard. Yeah. Like, and she runs a lot, too. Like, I listened to a podcast recently where she talked about, like, her lower body training. Um, and she, to get in stage condition, she she runs, which isn't, wow. like, a lot of people don't do that in bikini because mm-hmm. we're trying to keep our, you know, leg size and nice fullness. But she runs a lot. So I can imagine not being able to do that kind of cardio. Um, it'd be really hard to to bring in that kind of condition. So, um mm-hmm. So, yeah, but I think that was a game changer because when Jen wasn't doing it anymore and then Maureen and they both have like real bubbly like and they both come in a little bit like soft, I think, like softer and fuller and it looks good on them. But like most athletes, you know, they've got to come in pretty sharp riding that line of almost too lean to try to, you know, bring the type of conditioning. But both Mm -hmm. like Maureen and um, Jen like have more of like a full soft look so with the two of them out I was like oh this is like gonna really change things up a lot so um, I actually had Maureen in third because I thought Amy and Laura Lee were so comparable and I just thought Maureen as much as I love Maureen you know I just thought I didn't I didn't see her um taking first or second so yeah um so I had I had Ashley in third and of course we all know, like, I'm pretty sure everybody listening knows who Ashley Colt Walzer is. Like, you know, she's the oldest bikini competitor, <laughs> you know, she's <laughs> like yeah. not the oldest, but she's been around the longest and run like, I think 49 pro shows now. I think she's up to, I think that's why like mm-hmm. they cracked a joke about if she won like the Olympia, it would have been her 50th, like pro win. So she's the most oh, winning. It would have been cool for her. Pro. Yeah. So I had her and 
And, like, her and her coach, Adam, like, they they just have done this so many times. They know how to dial her in. They know what they're going to try to do. So I knew, she, like, in my head, I'm like, you're going to come in top five somewhere because you yeah. haven't not came in top five somewhere. So, like, where do yeah. I think you're going to possibly fit in? So that's kind of – I did think they really kind of are trying to lean towards – not such a dominant muscular look. So, like, I'm thinking, mm-hmm. okay, soft and bubbly. That was my kind of thought with that. Yeah, I'm with you. Like, I, I knew she'd be in that top five somewhere. Um, and she's she's consistent, right? Like, mm-hmm. she's um, really conditioned. I think that they um, decided to bring the fullness in. Because I think when she got she got beat twice this year by two pros that um, – weren't anywhere near that top 10 even um but Mm -hmm. when she was beat they've said that she just didn't come in full enough um and so they really pushed the fullness for the olympian and i loved her look i thought that um she just looked you know she looked she looked really good i'm not a fan of her posing most people are not um but i think it's just she's like i'm me and this is just how i pose and i'm you know I'm not, I'm not saying she doesn't work on it, but I'm, I'm sure she's heard a million times that people don't like her posing. It's not her like strong suit, but it doesn't really that I think it kind of goes to show you yeah. that like that routine, like how much is that really judged? It's it's the impression and she makes a good enough impression that it doesn't have to be like the most elaborate choreography. Like people just mm-hmm. she brings the physique and she's consistent. And I think they also it said is- too like her hair wasn't great. Like I yeah. didn't really notice it. Um it was a wig or something? What, what was it? Like? So it was sewing extensions because I listened to her oh, recap. Because okay. um, mm-hmm. I've been trying to kind of pick up different recaps that are, you know, it's taking a minute for them all to come out. Yeah. Um, but hers came out really fast. So because they, she lives in Vegas. So um, she did so, so in extensions and she just didn't like him that much. And compared to Laura, like you're comparing every single thing to Laura Lee. It's like. Yeah, you can see where her hair do- didn't look the greatest. But it's like it's like those few little things. But you're right. Like, her posing routine isn't everybody's cup of tea, but it is her routine. It fits her. I remember a long time ago when kind of the sexier posing routines were coming around. And, like, mm-hmm. her personality did not fit that. And she did have a fear that that's where it was going. But the judges said no. The judges said do, like, whatever, the, yeah. whatever works. And that's now why we have – girls that will do like a sexy routine or like a bubbly or like a mix you know it's like you do what fits best for you but it comes down to your your front and your back and that's what they're judging you on yeah Mm -hmm. exactly yeah so um yeah so again like not not surprised to see her take second place um and I think that was that's been her highest placing for the last couple of years because I think she third the last couple years last year she came in third yeah. So she moved and up. And then the year so before like, she was third or fourth, I think, because mm-hmm. um, it was Maureen and, and Jen and Laura. So Lauren, I think she, maybe. Well, I don't know. I can't remember. Um, I think Ashley. So yeah, she's third, very I consistent. I think she can win an, another Olympia, you know. I mean. Mm-hmm. It just um, depends who shows up that day, right? And how they show up. How they show up. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then uh, in fifth place, I had Issa Pacini. I think mine got out of order. That's right. We were talking about this. Oh, yeah. You had because, Annie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Issa was beautiful. So stunning. She changed her suit from pre-judging to finals, though. She wore, like, red at pre-judging, and then she had blue on at finals. Which um, one do you prefer? I was going to ask you that, because I know which one I prefer. I like blue on her. I thought Me I like the blue too. better. So yeah. her look in Texas, like... It was just beautiful. Like, yeah. I, it was her happiness, her her physique, her suit, everything. It was like on point in Texas when she won that show, and yeah. it just like. So when she wore red, of course it was beautiful, but I'm like, mm. and then she changed it. And I was like, oh, that looks so good. Yeah, the blue just really stood out on her. I thought, um, but I, I mean, I, I honestly, I thought she was. I thought she looked great. I thought she was on. I think her confidence was there. But when you saw her in the lineup, you could just see she'd lost a little bit of her fullness. And from what I've heard um, in her travels, like from wherever she was staying till her time in Vegas, she like dropped some weight, which happens Mm -hmm. to athletes, you know, if they've Mm -hmm. had a long season and their metabolism is cranking and travel can be stressful and they all of a sudden, you know, start dropping weight. Um, and so, you know, it's not a mistake on anyone's part. It, it ha- these things happen. The body is really sensitive at this level. And um, 
so it just you know I mean she's absolutely stunning and I, I just I, I like her so much I'd love to see her take another Olympia title you know um, she's got just like yeah. the most amazing waistline um, but you know again to place top 10 at the Olympia is is a massive accomplishment you know so um, yeah mm -hmm. and what did she end up placing well we'll talk about that in a minute this is still just our predictions um, oh I was then, totally gonna say <laughs> In sixth place, I had Ariana Brothers because I'm a huge fan of her look as well. Um, so I had Angelica. I had Ashlyn Little in seventh. I love, I, I love her look. Like, yeah, she just has just like you know. And, well, she's a short blonde too, so you know. Um, and mm -hmm. she was you know really full, and her posing was beautiful, and. Like hair, makeup, suit, everything was just, you know, on. I thought she looked amazing. So it was no surprise to see her in that, um, you know, mix of six through ten. Yeah, she's like one of – I've always loved her. I love her physique. Mm -hmm. I love her her waistline compared to her glutes. I've just mm -hmm. always, like – like her structure. I just yeah. always found her, like, really fascinating. And, like, following her on social media, like, she's probably one of my favorite people. And it's weird. I've never met her. I, like, don't know. Like, I just, like, she's just – I don't know. She has like this it factor about her. I always just thought was cute, but yeah. her physique it was is like stunning. Her like, just the yeah. structure and yeah, it's like a, a dream physique for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I loved and I loved seeing Angelica on stage again and like rooting for her and like just yeah. like being able to like just see like after kids after everything like mm -hmm. put, coming back out there and being having that having that physique and like strutting your stuff and like posing. It was just I, I just thought she looked great. Yeah, I'm sure that she was elated and, and so happy mm -hmm. to um, to be back on the Olympia stage because the Arnold was her first show back after taking a two-year break. What was it, three years? Um, yeah, the Arnold was her – because remember last Olympia, she was there helping with media and somebody asked yeah. her – if she was competing soon and she was like, well, mm -hmm. maybe. And that was when and she then, put in for the Arnold got in. And, um, so that was the first time we had seen her and she looked mm -hmm. phenomenal and then took away, you know, the judges feedback. Cause I think after, um, her Arnold showing, they wanted her to bring up her glutes a little bit and she definitely did that. She really, her physique really changed from, you mm -hmm. know, spring till now. Um, and yeah, she, she looked incredible. So I was really, really happy to see her, um, in that top 10. I'm, I'm excited to see what she does next, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah. that cause I listened to her whole like Jay Cutler interview. It was, yeah. it was pretty long, but it was really good. And, uh, it, that was like yeah. the last part of her announcement was the fact that she was coming back to the stage for the Arnold. So she I did. Mean, yeah, she's, the yeah. She's proved that like having babies and being, she just turned 40. I mean, she's not going anywhere. So I think it's awesome, you know? And I think mm -hmm. too, like it's a testament to how she lives her lifestyle. Like obviously she's, you know, she had a healthy pregnancy and she stayed really healthy, you know, recovering from both pregnancies and, you know, mm -hmm. her, her little ones are really little, you know, there's a cute little video of them like greeting her with flowers when she mm -hmm. got off the plane. Oh my God. Yeah. So cute. They were running so up cute. to her. Oh, I so know. Cute. I know. It's really sweet. So really, really happy for her. Um, and then I had in ninth place, Vanya, Vanya, Aug I think, I think it's a goose day, but they say August. Um, hmm. and she was, um, second at the was she second at the Arnold this year and she won the Arnold UK that's right so I mean she's got great that's stage right, yeah. presentation yeah and she ended up fifth that. at the Olympia so do you rem do you remember watching that together <laughs> I do yes. yes yeah we were up in the morning and we we're watching it on our tablets I know yeah it's that was it's fun. been an exciting season for sure so I love Vanya and you had mm -hmm. um Tara Greer in your in ninth place Mm -hmm. which I love her. She, I think she placed outside of the top 10, but she was in the top 15 she, yeah. for sure. Um, and then I, I had Tara in 10th place and then I you didn't have had a tenth place. Well, I don't know. These numbers are a little bit messed up. I, a little chart. I got like jumbled because I was traveling and I was like, and then my numbers didn't match up to like, so I was like, this is who I have. And then it got kind of messy, but like I did have Brittany, uh, Glip, Glipsy. I'm Gillespie. probably going to botch that name. 
This is just because it's kind of like a fangirl crush. I'll totally admit that. Like, her glutes are just beautiful, and I love her story. So, if you guys don't know who she is, um, she competed at the beginning of this year, and she placed seventh. So, her physique is beautiful. She competed at her first, I think it was like her first pro show of the opening year, and she came seventh. It was eight. like Clash or something, right? One of the first ones. It wasn't, I, no, it was, I was in Clash. That's right. It was somewhere out in California because I remember yeah. watching it. Mm -hmm. And um, she had decided to compete a week later at a different show out in like Virginia. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you think about it, not a lot of people do that because you're like, oh, well, if you came in seventh, why are you going to go and compete again? But she took the judges feedback. She knew the stuff that she wanted to fix. Her and her coach think she's with Fit Body Fusion. I don't want to misspeak, but I'm almost positive she that's was. her coach. She made it a coach. Okay. Coach. Okay. So sorry. But so a week later, she decided to compete in the show. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, you don't think much of it. She wins that pro show. And she looked stunning. Like, there was mm -hmm. no question. And she did a whole post about how that, like, she changed her hair. She, I think, pretty sure she changed her suit color. She made these few critiques with her, like, nutrition. All in this, like, short time frame. Yeah. And she was able to accomplish so much. And just, like, travel and do the work and show up and, like, just, you know, dominated the show. And it was a good pro show. Yeah. And... I just like her story, her energy, like her just like vibes, I guess you want to say. I'm like, ah, oh, I would love for you to be top 10. <laughs> she does have a really stunning physique. I think her, to, it, to me, just as someone yeah. who, it, it, her glutes look like they belong in a different body. Like it's, it's fascinating, but I think mm -hmm. it's a bit, but then, I mean, Laura Lee's got really, really powerful glutes, but in Laura Lee's front shot, her glutes don't stick way out. Like Britney's stick way. It's yeah. awesome. Like it's so awesome, but I think it just, it's just a, um, an imbalance. Maybe I don't really know. Yeah. Um, but she's absolutely stunning. And I, I agree with you. I thought that was such a cool story of like the difference a week can make at the, mm -hmm. at the pro level. Like don't count anyone out. Like somebody can go away and make a few minor, minor adjustments and boom, they win. Happens all the time at the national shows that are kind of like close together. You know, you could have somebody who like, oh, they were in 10th, you know, no big deal. They could get the pro card. You know, you just, you don't, you don't know. Um, that's how, how close it is, you know, at, at this level. So, um, yeah. so yeah, I let, I thought she'd be a lot higher. I think she was like in one of the last call outs. I was kind of surprised by that. The other like surprising snub, I thought was um, Valeria. Oh my God, what is her last name? I'm totally spacing. She on face on Instagram. She's like um, official cord K O R D Valeria. God, what's her name? I think she's from uh, Europe and really stunning physique and was doing pretty well, like placing consistently, like top three, top five. Um, and she was just looking really good. I mean, she literally looks like a statue. She looks like the trophy. Um, and she was like in the very last call out. So that was um, a bit of a surprise. And then the other surprise too was all of the Asian competitors and how darn good they looked. And I've never seen most of them before. So I think for next year, I want to follow more of like the shows that are happening overseas, just so I kind of have an idea of kind of like what those um, those athletes kind of, kind of look like. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we didn't see many of them in that top 15, but, um, you know, really great, cool, like posing, great looks, like all that stuff. So, um, you know, I think that was, you know, just interesting. Like, I remember just being like, wow, like, who are these girls? I've never seen any of them before, you know? Mm -hmm. So who's yeah. someone that you would have liked to see in that top 10 that you that thought to deserve to be there and didn't end up there? <laughs> Well, I want to say Brittany because she wasn't in the top ten. Yeah. Like that, that would, but like, I do agree. Like what you said is spot on. Like her glutes, it's an, there's so, like she has a beautiful structure, but for the sport, there has like I I want like wonder if that's her feedback. Like if the fact that it's so overpowering compared to the rest of her structure, and so you either got to build for it or bring that down. You know, so but that would really like. Yeah, it would be her. Like, I'm trying to think. Because I know Allie. Yeah. I think Allie came in. Yeah, Allie was in the top 15. Yeah, she was in top 15. And I thought she was stunning, too. Mm -hmm. 
Jordan so, Brandon got probably. in the top 15. I love her too. She mm-hmm. has um, a great look. She's just a nice person, such a nice person. Um, Jessica Wilson, I'm a big fan. You know, she's of our reigning Masters Olympia bikini champion from 2023. Um, I would have liked to see her place a lot higher. Um, and because uh, I'm just, you know, I love her look. But I think it's, I mean, just to even get there is a huge, huge accomplishment. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, it was it was a stacked, stacked lineup. So, um, but it was really exciting. Obviously, we're huge fans mm-hmm. of the sport. So, um, well, and I like that this year it's kind of far away from the Arnold now. It's not so close. Mm-hmm. And I know that's been like discussed before. So now like there's some time for the Arnold. So I wonder like it will be really neat to watch the Arnold this year. I mean, it's neat every year, but it will be interesting to say the least to watch it this year. Cause yeah. I'm sure Ashley will be in it too now because la- this year she wasn't in it cause she had eye surgery. So as much as she likes to compete, it'd be kind of interesting to see if she's going to do that show. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I wonder if Laura Lee will now not do it because she won the Olympia title and she has won the Arnold three times. So, um, Mm -hmm. you know, typically they don't usually the Olympia winner sits out the Arnold. Um, so I don't know. I'm excited to see what her year looks like. I would just love to see her compete more just because I, I love her shape. And then I think that's one thing with the pro league is that like, you know, when Jen and Maureen were, you know, one and two, it was like, you know, well, those they're one and two and we only ever see them at the Olympia. So how do we yeah. even know how everyone is kind of stacking up? You know, it's like, you know, the, the top two in the world for three years weren't at any other shows. So, um, so it'll be interesting to see what, what Laura Lee does. Um, yeah. You know. And Maureen did say she was going to do more or a show other than the Olympia this year. So maybe that might be it too. So it, it will be, well, that's, yeah, she should have, that's like plenty of time for her ankle to heal, depending what's like all the stuff that has to be done. But yeah, 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 it will be be exciting 2025 for sure, man. (laughs) Yeah. Things are just, they slow down a little bit and then we all get kind of excited for the Arnold and things started, which will be here before we know it. Gosh, Um, I know. And so, um, so yeah, which I guess in closing, we can kind of share a little bit about like our, well, I will, and you don't have to, if you want to, like, you know, what we're thinking <laughs> for 2025, 25, yeah. that's so crazy to me. Do you know how fun that year is going to be though? I hope so. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be hard to top so? this year. Like it will be really hard to top this year, but I'm really excited but- about it. And, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll just, we're just going to see what what it brings, but I'm going to be going into prep earlier in the year than I thought. Um, and so probably earlier into next year. Yeah. Like I had originally thought I would start a little bit later. I was like, well, since I don't have to compete in July anymore, because I've always kind of been like, Oh, all the national shows for masters are in the summer. So I would kind of always start prep, um, early in the new year, um, with a warm up show, like in May or June. Um, but, uh, I'm going to start, prep earlier and start competing earlier this year because um, I just want to get out there and and kind of see I think I have like small regrets about not doing a pro show right after getting my pro card because I didn't get any feedback and I just went into an off season but I I had no control over that it was like I ran out of time because of our yeah you had all the trips yep there was just no time there was actually no show I could even do between getting my pro card and leaving for our vacation. Like I, I had no, no choices. So, um, so yeah, so I, I, I think, I feel like if I can get a little feedback early, it does give me a chance to kind of see where I'm at and go, okay, am I gunning for, you know, the master's Olympia or am I doing a year of competing to improve, get stage time, gather feedback, um, and then step away and shoot for the next Masters Olympia. So I just have no idea. So I'm kind of eager to just get out there. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm working with, I'm still with James with Atlas, Team Atlas, um, for, you know, all of the prep and nutrition and mm-hmm. all body composition, all that stuff. Um, but I've hired Corey Lindner for training for my off season. Um, so he runs my um, my training and gives me my workouts and I send videos and he sends feedback. It's been really great. Um, just doing things differently and I've enjoyed it. So I'm just trying to 
improve upon the things I need to improve on and the other changes that I've been posing more, which I've never done in the past. I've, it's not something that I've focused on in my off season. I'm kind of like, oh, like when I'm getting fluffy, it's the last thing that I want to do. But sure. um, you don't get better at it if you don't practice. And I'm going from doing like a 15 second routine to a 45 second routine. And I want to look really comfortable and really confident up there. So I've been posing um, and stretching and doing, you know, doing more, you know, pro things than I've really ever done before in an off season. So, um, so I'm excited just to Mm. see what, see what next year brings. That is exciting. And we have a lot of stuff going on with the team too, because you are mm-hmm. traveling with them and planning quite a bit with that, with our team, you know, with our mom shell competitors. So that'll be really exciting to see. So it's already like the first, like the beginning of not the beginning, but the first part of next year is just like, you have that downtime between like January and like March, maybe the mm-hmm. end of March. Yeah. And then it just seems like it picks up and you have all these opportunities to possibly step on stage and all these different locations and you know, so it's exciting. It's really, yeah, really good. I know. It's going to be good. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So I think that's pretty much all we've got for today. That was just really, we kind of been craving just having some girl time and kind of catching mm-hmm. up. Um, as much as we love having our guests on, um, we don't get a chance to talk about what we're up to. And, well, to be fair, I mean, off season is not as exciting <laughs> as, yeah. you know, when we're we're prepping and having, you know, changes happening more frequently. But, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, we, uh, yeah. we summed up, you know, everything, so... It was, yeah, it was quite a lot. And I will say, as we like wrap up this episode, I do have some stuff that is going on as well in my improvement time and a little bit of every aspect of my life, I will say, which it is going to take a little bit longer than the time that we have left with you guys for me to kind of break that down and explain it and be able to share in detail. So maybe in the next coming like episodes, I will you know, go into detail. Cause I know Jillian will kind of ask me a few questions. So. <laughs> I was like, are you ready to so. go into that yet? And you're like, not yet, not yet. So. so yeah, I think, you know, I will say the next like episode or two, I will share exactly what's going on with me and my plans for 25 and, and just, you know, kind of more about my personal life that probably a lot of you guys don't know about me unless you have listened or followed me or been friends with me for a long time. But I also would like to say to everybody listening, do not you know, don't forget, Jillian and I are also lifestyle coaches on top of prep coaches. Yeah. So if you listen to our podcast and you think to yourself, like, there, you know, I don't want to step on stage, but I wonder how some of these moms do it. Or I wonder how, you know, this new mom that just had a baby lost all this weight or, you know, stepped on stage. How does she have that confidence? And I promise you, it's absolutely in everybody. Rather you're stepping on stage or not, you have that confidence and power in you. And we work with a lot of lifestyle clients that we teach them that we help them through that, through nutrition planning, workouts at home or at at the gym, you know, vacations, we work with them through all of that. So always feel free to reach out to us on any platform and we can definitely get you started as one of our clients. So it is always, you know, we get so excited. We forget to to mention that we, like what we do for a living, like, cause there's surprisingly shocker. There's no money in podcasting. Um, (laughs) Who would have thought? uh, Who would have thought? I really thought I would make a million dollars doing this podcast. Like I thought Joe Rogan would be all worried about um so yeah but I mean I I think this is kind of a time that people start to think about the new year and Mm -hmm. um and their goals and I'm not saying we're out of time we still got a couple months left you know and Mm -hmm. in our program we do help our clients like slay the holidays you don't have to like you know forego all the treats there's a way to kind of navigate the holidays and still stay on track with your goals so we're happy to help with that we're happy to help with posing with stage presentation or you know I get questions all the time I don't charge anything to answer those questions so if something has sparked your interest and you want some info just send us a message Um, our information is below and uh, we'd love Mm -hmm. to help you reach your goal whatever that goal might be so So, yeah. So thank you guys for listening today and we look forward to talking next week. Yes. We'll see you soon. Thanks for tuning in. All right. Bye bye guys.